Hey guys, what's happening? So, got another Pico. So, I saw this on offer up. It was 200 bucks, um, which is kind of expensive for uh, an old engine. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing this engine is probably about uh, 10 to 12 years old. But, I mean, this thing, he said it was brand new. He just ran a couple, like, two tanks, just as, a, as, a, as like, a break-in. Um, but it actually looks like it's brand new. I mean, it's definitely... I, I've already taken the cover off and looked at the crank, but everything looks super, super clean. So, um, this is actually my third Pico. Um, it's a Pico 20, if I didn't mention that. But then I had a, a version 12 of the exact same engine. You can see that right there. So I had a 12 of the same exact engine. Um, but yeah, Picos are awesome engines. I mean, I, I actually kind of like them better than Nova Rossi's. Um, I do actually have a couple Novas, RBs. I mean, a lot of different Italian engines. But it actually came with a set of uh, Boca bearings. Um, so I don't know if the guy had replaced these things or had planned to replace them. And actually, I'm not even sure if they're actually for this engine, but I went ahead and got some uh, ceramic bearings from Acer Racing. And uh, Acer Racing has been in uh, RC for a long, long time, since the 80s. You know, providing bearings for uh, car kits and different engines. So um, this is my other Pico. I just actually got running yesterday for the first time. Pico Auto on-road engine, ceramic bearings. Pretty nice engine. Still kind of getting it tuned in. Um, yeah, I'm having a, a slight stalling issue with that thing. So, um, but I noticed the actual the gas it runs about on 30%, which is probably not the best run on road engine. I think normally they'd want to run on 16%, but even on the specs of this one, they they recommend a 20% um, oil. But I'm gonna take it apart. I'll show it to you. But I do actually have some uh, because it's not fully broken in yet. I'm actually going to be running the Basher 20% with 14% oil. And once it's broken in, then I'm going to probably lower down the oil. And we start running some 30%, you know, with less oil. Uh, I mean, the engine will last longer if you run more oil and, like, less uh, less nitro. But, alright, let's take a look at this thing. So, i get the back cover off. And, you know, I want to replace the bearings if I can, you know. Um, if not, then I'm going to send these back. But I don't know if there's ceramic bearings already in there. I couldn't tell. Um, because the guy did something with this thing, you know? Like, why do you have the extra bearings on a brand new engine? But, I mean, it looks super clean. Right, I'm going to get the head off. And uh, I'm going to count the amount of ports. I I'm thinking it's a 7-port engine. But, uh, we'll take it apart and find out for sure. Alright, so I forgot to mention that it's actually a JL version of the Pico. Which, I don't know if it was off now or not, but... My other one, this point twelve was a turbo plug. So I'm guessing this is probably going to be a turbo plug too. I mean, most of the high-end Italian engines are, will have a turbo plug. Alright. Wow, it looks super clean. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like a turbo plug. I can tell because th th this would be a lot larger. This would be the size of the thread if it wasn't a turbo plug. Like, it would be a much, uh, it would be bigger. It would be, it would be more round. Larger diameter. Alright, so let's get the sleeve out of there. Yeah, it looks super clean. Yeah, I can tell it has a lot of ports. Alright, I'm gonna get my uh, get this out of here. Make sure I don't lose the shims. It looks like it has a couple other shims here. I'm using a zip tie. That way you don't actually scuff up the... I go this way. There's my three. Three inch here. Look here. Is that 2.5? It's 2.5. There we go. There we go. Whoa. Kind of a big piston. 28. Alright, so let's count the ports here. So these two don't count. The exhaust and the exhaust size don't count. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm, I'm assuming these are actually counted as intake ports. Because the piston would go down, I think, below that port point. Yeah, from what I read the line, it wasn't a lot of specs on the line. That's the problem with the older the Pico engines, right? Is they don't Pico doesn't keep a lot of documentation on their engines, whereas Nova Rossi does. 
you can find old manuals and stuff, but these guys are, yeah, good luck trying to find specs on these engines, so. Alright, looking good, looking good. Alright, everything's looking good so far. Take the back cover off here. I'm guessing this is a, a 2.52 maybe. Let's see, no. This is going to be more uh, 2. Okay. This is kind of become like an addiction, like these <laughs> nitro engines. <laughs> Keep on spending more and more money on this stuff. Uh, they're so loud, you know. My, my, actually, I probably need to get an electric kid, car for my kid. I think he gets a little scared with the nitro. It's kind of loud, you know. Um, Alright, so it has a crank groove. So you can't pull the piston out at the bottom. You have to pull at the top. a really clean piston. Like I said, he said he just ran a couple of uh, break-ins, you know, but no scuffing on this piston at all. A little bit here, but yeah, this thing is looking good. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the most expensive, or the most money I've spent on an engine so far. Um, I spent 160 on the Pico Auto, and this one was 200. But you just can't find Pico 28s anymore. They're just, they're gone. I had to get this off for you. Well, I guess I can do it. Take a crank out of here. It's, it's not a DLC crate. They didn't start DLC, I think, it, like, within the last, maybe, like, so many years, they started DLC cutting the cranks. Uh, yeah, DLC cutter cranks are awesome. Like, the Pico Auto is DLC coded. Okay. Um... I don't like that groove right there. See that groove right there? I don't know if there was a piece of dirt in there. Right. So I'm going to take a closer look at these bearings. Okay. They don't seem like they're ceramics. I'm just wondering why I had the extra set of bearings. You know, but yeah, super clean engine. All right, so let me. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a closer look at these bearings with my stronger glasses and see if I can see a name, Let's see if they're factory. But all right, so I definitely want to put some ceramics in here. So with the ceramic bearings, I'm in probably into about 240 bucks, which is kind of well, not super bad, but it's still Pico. You know, they hold their value. And if you're wondering about these uh, stands right here, this is actually one of the first things I ever designed. Um, so this is a big block engine stand, small block. It's on my Thingiverse page. So on my uh, channel description, I think my Thingiverse link is on there. But I have a couple different engines for different different styles, like with rotostarts or whatever. So. so I just noticed, if you can look in there, see all that machining out of there? I don't see that on a lot of engines, all the extra machining in there like that. Uh, at least the block. I don't know if they do for for lightning or just uh, better fuel distribution. But I'm talking about the machining down below. All right, that's definitely a sign of a high-end engine. All right, so on my 12, which actually has an off-end label on there, it says "Made in Italy." Whereas I noticed that this one, I, I couldn't see. It didn't say "Made in Italy" anywhere. But the bearings are uh, Swiss-made bearings, so. Um, it's typically usually a sign that it was made in um, Europe somewhere. Alright, so here's a closer look at the ceramic bearings I got. Ceramic Nitride Pro Series Acer Racing. Uh, I don't know if they're actually made in the USA, but I know this company is based out of Los Angeles, which is not very far from me, but they've actually been in Southern California forever, uh, since the 80s. Um, like I said, it'd be nice enough these were made in the USA, but I don't see any markings on the bearings. Well, just a thought. Um, because if, you see, if this company has been around since the 80s, at one point they might have been making bearings here. Um, so it's, it's a possibility that they're actually they're made here. So it's um, probably unlikely now, but yeah, probably originally they were probably made here. You know, another thing too I was reading is that uh, most of your cheaper um, uh, ceramic bearings 
actually use a cheaper like nylon insert, you know, like the cage that holds the berries in place. Whereas this thing actually, they use peak, which uh, I wasn't, I didn't know they used that in production, but I know in 3D printing, there's a peak material, which is, can handle some extreme temperatures. So even like when I did the specs on the bearings, uh, bearings with, the, with actually, they use a peak uh, carrier, bearing carrier, are actually better. They can withstand like 250 degrees Celsius. So way higher than like nylon. So on the front seal, there's a, there's a seal cover on each side. That seal cover is not airtight. It's not supposed to be airtight. It's really just to prevent dust from getting in there. So on every single nitro engine I've ever actually seen, it's only on one side. The open the inside is usually open to the engine to get fuel and lube in there. So I'm going to try to take off one of the uh, seal covers on one side here. Um, I mean, there's a lot of debate on the internet about this, but uh, every single nitro engine I've ever seen is actually one side is open. All right, so I'm just going to use a little Exacto knife here and get that in there. Let's get that in there. Pop it out like that. Alright, ceramic. So I'm getting the whole engine taken apart for the uh, to get the bearings out. I'm going to heat up the block, tap out the bearings. I'm just going to throw in the oven. But I took off the carburetor and I'm actually going to measure the Venturi size with my calipers. Uh, it doesn't say anywhere on, on, the, on the Venturi, so. But I do actually like the composite carburetors. Right, make sure this thing doesn't have a. It's not broken the seal. Accordion seal, whatever you call it, dust cover. Um, yeah, you don't want to air leak. This feels a little stiff. I mean, this thing is t over 10 years old, 12, 10, 12 years old. So, um, yeah, I love the composite carburetors. You know, actually, you think you don't want to keep the fuel. It's like a modern car, vapor lock. Yeah, you don't want your fuel boiling, especially with alcohol in it too. You know, probably have a really low boiling point. Um, all right, so I'm gonna heat this up in the oven and just tap, tap, tap. So if you're wondering what I was talking about in the oven, um, so you put this whole thing in the oven and because aluminum actually heats faster than steel, you want to, you want to, you, you don't want to put it in there for more than five minutes just because you don't want the steel to grow because actually, actually as metal gets hot it grows, expands. So you want to uh, tap it out before they actually, you heat up the actual bearing because the, this, their, the denser steel will actually heat up slower than the actual aluminum. But so what I'm going to do is at the same time, I'm going to take these new ones and put them in the freezer to make them shrink and contract so I can pop them in. Alright, so if the oven trick doesn't work, what I do is I put the whole block in the freezer with the bearings and then I heat the case up with the heat gun. Alright, as you can see, the engine block is frozen. Alright, concentrate the heat where the bearings are right here. Alright, so I finally got the bearings out. I actually had to go up to 350 degrees on my oven. It finally came out. Um, so yeah, they're both Swiss bearings. But they're, I mean, they're a little gummed up, so... Um, the guy said he actually ran two tanks for this thing, just broke it in. And, uh, but yeah, I have a... I gotta clean it up with a Q-tip and some alcohol. Get all that stuff off before I put the new bearings in. The ceramic bearings I have been they've been in my uh, <clears throat> what's it called for a uh, about an hour. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do the reverse order. I'm gonna put them in first, put the front one in first. The front one's always way harder to get in than the back one. So I do actually have a couple presses. So if I can't get it in by hand, then I'm gonna use my presses. Yeah, I have uh, that kind of press and fiber press right there. I got the ceramics in there. So the trick was I had to freeze the bearings and heat the block up to 350 to get it in there. So hopefully they last, we'll see. But I took the uh, Swiss ones and I, I'm going to soak them or clean them with a brake clean because they were kind of dirty and then I uh, them reuse these if I have to. Um, and that's PB plaster, 
prevent it from rusting. It's a mean little PB blaster to lube it up, but I'm just gonna put it back together in reverse order and uh, fire this up. Put it in my uh, Mugen Truggy. Yeah, I'm not sure what this guy had on here, but um, I'm not gonna even chance uh, trying to mess up the crankshaft. Um, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't get this thing off. I mean, the guy must have some kind of like heavy Loctite on there or something. Yeah, I got it off. Turn that off. Um, yeah, you have to be careful because I've seen a lot of people bust their cranks. You know, mm. gotta heat it up. Never like, never force it because, like I said, I mean, well, this thing will split the the, the threads. So, right, so the Venturi that came with it, it's eight millimeters, which I think is perfect for a twenty-eight. Actually, sometimes I even go smaller, just because it's, uh, I feel like the smaller Venturi gives you a little bit more throttle response and torque. More, more on the bottom end. Right, but this so is... I like the Mugen down. Uh, so that's actually my RC mounting system. It's on my Thingiverse page if you have a 3D printer and you want to print it out. Alright, so I'm going to take out on the Mugen Trogi here. Put the Pico, the other Pico in there. Alright, so here's the Mugen. This is the uh, car the uh, engine's going to go into. So right now I'm currently running an Associate Electronics 28. Trying out different engines, see how they run. Um, but yeah, this is like an older uh, Mugen. I think it's MDX five or six, but it was like the first Truggy that ever came out. But this, well, the first Truggy that ever came out, it was like a conversion kit. You couldn't actually buy it. I think it was version five. But uh, I guess I got the Dynamite Platinum pipe on there. Um, so I got to pull the engine out. I got a new air cleaner adapter too. So I wanted to make the air cleaner go from I wanted to wrap it around this way instead of actually just going straight up. But, uh, all right, time to get the Pico in there. All right, here they are side by side. This is the Associated Electronics AE28 Pro. So they're both 28s. Um, I think this one's a little bit newer, maybe like four, four years maybe. Um, can't tell for sure. Like I said, it's hard to get Pico specs, you know. Um, you Google it and a page might come up, but it's... Like, I think this is probably, like, 2004, 2005, and this is probably, like, 2008, probably. All right. So I got to move over the uh, crankshaft, or not the crankshaft, but the uh, clutch over. All right, got the clutch installed, properly shown. Not too much play in here. All right, so I got this thing put it back together. Ready to fire it up. So I'm going to use the, uh, the Master Basher. It actually has a higher percentage of uh, oil, 14%. Just because I don't really know the status of the engine. Like I said, he just said he really hadn't fully broken it in yet. So, um, plus it has new bearings. So, I mean, even though ceramic bearings should, shouldn't should have to break in. You know, at least on the ceramic side of it. Um, yeah, but this one was 20%, 9% oil. So, um, got the new air filter on. Well, I had to actually, I got a new pipe. And I got that. And a couple of cool things I've been making. Because I never get to actually film the RC action. <laughs> I'm always showing you actually getting the engines running, but I never actually show you driving the cars. So I created a uh, camera mount here for the... This should pretty much fit, fit most uh, truggies or buggies. A wing uh, camera mount here for a GoPro. Alright, let's fire this thing up. So, Alright, let me turn the butt box on. Power. It's on. Actually, I need to prime the uh, engine first. Turn my radio on here. And prime, prime this thing in. There we go. off here this definitely looks a little bit richer than you'd normally see it Let's see me turn out it is so three and a half turns out I want to see how many it was actually in. So where's the 
car. Okay, cool. So, one of the problems with my other car was, was <laughs> you couldn't actually uh, even get to the low speed or the uh, carb idle. Curb idle. All right, uh, we're still connected. <laughs> Mm-hmm.